I think Andrea Ledson will provide uh, a very, very good uh, fight, a very good contest. And I think that you'll garner a fair amount of support from the Tory grassroots, mainly because most most Tory grassroots activists were pro-Brexit. And Andrea Ledson was, you know, a real key figure in the Brexit campaign. Okay, and how much do we know about May and uh, what she would fight for or not fight for dealing with the EU? Well, uh, Theresa May is the longest serving Home Secretary uh, in, in recent British history. I mean, she is a long standing supporter of a more liberal conservatism, a more moderate conservatism. Uh, she famously said the Tory party needed to get away from being the nasty party and to sort of reach out to centrist voters. So she's been an MP for many, many years, since 97. She's, a, you know, like longest serving Home Secretary. She's got bags of experience. So we know who she is. The question is, who is Andrea Leadsom? Ah, uh, interesting. Okay. Uh, you think uh, this all, all boils down to the integrity of the United Kingdom. You think that's in jeopardy, I know. Uh, and you think that this whole Brexit vote divided England and, and actually Britain. You're talking here about the, the likelihood or possibility uh, that Scotland and Ireland could, uh, could want to spin off. Yeah, I don't think Northern Ireland will break away, but I, th I think increasing the chances of a separate Scotland have increased. Um, and if you're a unionist and you believe in the, the union of the United Kingdom, that's really bad news. I mean, mainly because Scotland has voted overwhelmingly uh, to stay within the European Union and is governed by the Scottish National Party and they're nationalists. And their whole raison d'etre is to, well, to gain Scottish independence, if you look at it one way, or to break up the United Kingdom, if you look at it another way. So I, I think, yeah, I think we're actually further on down that line. I mean, I don't think it's going to happen any day soon. And personally, as a unionist, I think it would be a, a, you know, a great shame. And not in the interest of ordinary Scottish voters, to be perfectly frank. But I think it does lead us a next step towards the breakup of the UK. OK, talking about next steps, I mean, uh, following, of course, the, the Brexit uh, debacle. Uh, you're, you're all eyes and everybody else has all eyes on what happens in, in France and also in Germany with, with their elections. What are your expectations? Well, it's, it's fascinating. I think, I think Brexit in itself is a question that has various layers. One of the layers is, um, you know, the, the real issue that many, many people had with widespread um, EU migration, low skill migration. Uh, which the government never got a handle on, has been a real negative for working class uh, families and individuals, especially in uh, England. And that's really, I think, why uh, the Leave campaign won, because so many working class labour supporting uh, folk, uh, especially men, thought, you know, this is just really not a great deal for us. So that's one thing, the issue of immigration, the issue of um, you know, why an awful lot of folk want to leave the EU. The other thing really is to what extent this will become viral, to what extent this will, Britain's Brexit will, will almost spread, the idea will spread and, and other movements within other EU countries will start thinking, well, do you know what, we're not happy with it, we're quite Eurosceptic, we're, you know, we don't think the EU is necessarily on the side of the little guy. And that's, I think, what the elites in the EU were very worried about. And so that's why the German uh, a Bundestag election uh, and the, uh, in 2017 and the French presidential election in 2017 are really key factors to watch.